Live one, this is me, Ryan. Some of you know me as John Doe. Others of, others of you know me as simply a human being. Now, what we want to talk about is our good, good friend, Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, and his current highly nationalized, highly nationalist government. Uh, two important things that are getting more and more traction here in Japan. It's clear that he's taking the um, LDP, the <laughs> Liberal Democratic Party, in a direction that's quite interesting. Now, everybody's heard about Abenomics and everything's going off that. But there are also some political things going on here that he's pushing really hard for. Number one issue in this it's a little complex here is to change Article 9 of the Japanese Constitution, which effectively makes the Japanese Constitution a pacifist constitution. What it would do is to change the nature of the Japanese military. Now, currently, the Japanese military is strictly prohibited from taking any action that is not for the purpose of self-defense. The, the Constitution limits the military to only protect Japanese territories. It cannot engage in any aggressive action towards any military force. It cannot serve in any, um, what we say, um, combat situation in any country. It can only be deployed in a foreign country for humanitarian purposes or for um, supply line support. And no military personnel can even draw their weapon unless they are in intimate danger or being fired upon. Now, some people would say that because this initially was imposed upon Japan from the Americans developing their constitution, that having this pacifist constitution is um, given into imperialism and the imperialist powers of America. But I see this a bit differently. I see this as, yes, this type of thing was imposed on, upon Japan by the American influenced constitution. But I also view this as a highly beautiful thing. Japan is the only country in the world where war is illegal. War is outlawed. War is forbidden. Taking any aggressive action militarily against any country is not allowed. They don't do that. They refuse to do that, and they legally cannot do that. That's a very good thing. But oh no, Mr. Uh, Abe there, he doesn't like that. He wants to make Japan have a full-on military with full aggressive capabilities to attack anyone anytime they want and engage in that cute little idea called collective defense, which means if they have a military uh, agreement with any other country, and that country's attacked, Japan can jump in and get in, jump on the gravy train and get some, some of that action, right? You know what that means, right? Of course. If they can engage in collective defense, they can uh, start carrying out the, uh, the will of America militarily. So it would be an extension of the American military, effectively. And that's simply unacceptable. So I'd say as long as Japan is um, militarily occupied, which they still are to this day, by America, there's no way Article 9 should be changed. At all. As some would say, well, you're not from this country, you shouldn't have a right to say anything. Now, it's a weak argument, okay, because I live here. Japan is my home. And I intend to live in this country for many, many, many years. I've already lived in this country for a long time. So don't come across that argument that I should sit down and shut up simply because I'm not a citizen. I am a permanent resident, which is effectively one step from being a citizen. So I do have a right to voice my opinion because having a full-on military that can engage in aggressive action against other countries 
and engage in collective defense and carry out the military will of other countries will have a direct effect on me because I live here. All right? So that's that. But there's another far more interesting thing that Mr. Abe is wanting to do. He's wanting to change the very nature of the government itself. Now, currently, the Japanese emperor is a effectively simply a symbol of Japan, which is very, very, very hilarious when you look at history and what the imperial house actually represents. But he serves as more of a guiding light, more of a um, symbol of Japanese uh, harmony, things like that. But historically, he represents something totally different. But Mr. Abe wants to change that. He wants to make the Japanese emperor the official head of state and give the Japanese emperor absolute final veto on any action the government takes. So basically, he wants to give the emperor the final say with everything. That's dangerous. You know, we want to talk about progressing Japan forward. But here's Mr. Abe want to take Japan backwards and reestablish an imperial system. You have a king at the top who can override the will of the people. Not that the political class here in Japan actually represents the people, but in the, still, in the same sense, is it necessary to have one hereditary man standing on top of a throne who can, any time he chooses, can resist any action taken against the, by the government, whether it's in line with the will of the people or against the will of the people by the political class, he can make that final decision. That's a horrible idea. I'm sorry, you know. Yeah, I live in a country here in Japan that has a king, but he just a symbol. But give this man actual political power? What is Abe thinking? You know, no. You don't want a king with power. We tried that in Japan in the past, and you saw what happened. The country went crazy. And it started attacking and murderizing all of its Asian na na neighbors and create a horrible empire. That's the legacy of the imperial household. That's the legacy of that family. And he's actually pushing to give that family political power again. That's a horrible idea, Japan. And I really wish more people here in Japan would speak up against that and resist that. So far, the only resistance that we really see is coming from a junior member of the current coalition government. Yeah, technically, it's a coalition government. This party called New Komito. Now, New Komito has been accused, it's basically true, that they are a religious, type of religious party. They're backed by lay Buddhists. And they are against changing the pacifist government extremely against it because they're Buddhist influence. But there's really been no serious resistance to giving the emperor an official title again, an official power. So that's what's going on here in Japan. Uh, please leave comments in the comment box below. Share this video if you want. And if you do feel so inclined, make a video response. Till next time, this is me, Ryan, right here in Japan. Check it out.